Though India was really a haven for the Jews, Hinduism has a tradition of tolerance and that extended to people from many religions, Jews to Parsis, who sought refuge in India. There was never any indigenous anti-Semitism in India, in any of its communities. We lived alongside our neighbors in harmony and freedom. Today, there are less than 5,000 Jews in all of India of the 50,000 who once lived there, most of them in Bombay. There are 35 elderly Jews left in Calcutta and 15 in Cochin. And that's um, a very big part of why I feel very strongly about sharing the stories and songs of our community. Uh, you may have also heard of one other community, the Bene Menashe. They are from the northeast Indian states of Manipur and Mizoram that straddle the Burmese border, and they belong to the Shimlung tribe. They were raised Presbyterian, but now about 7,000 members of the tribe have studied and converted to Judaism, and about 1,000 have made Aliyah. They say that they are descendants of the tribe of Menashe. Indian independence in 1947 and the establishment of the State of Israel caused the dramatic decline of India's Jewish community. And um, we'll talk a little bit more about that, but uh, uh, Jews went and the Jewish community of India, uh, many made Aliyah and others went to uh, live in England, Australia, Canada, and the United States. So, um, let me just tell you a little bit about Calcutta, and I will take you now to Calcutta, a teeming city of 18 million, whose very name evokes images of Mother Teresa and desperate poverty. But Calcutta was also the capital of British India, a vibrant center of trade and culture. The first Jew to settle in Calcutta was Shalom Kohen, a Syrian businessman who made it his home in 1798 at the age of 26. The Calcutta community grew to have five synagogues, two Jewish schools, a Jewish hospital, and more. At its height in the 1940s and 50s, the Jewish population of Calcutta numbered about 5,000. And this is the groundbreaking of the Neve Shalom Synagogue in 1910. So you can see uh, what the community looked like. My great-grandfather is somewhere in the middle of that picture with a little boy on his lap who is my great uncle. The first Jews who came to Calcutta spoke Judeo-Arabic, an ancient form of Arabic interspersed with some Hebrew. We learned Hebrew, the language of prayer, Hindi and its dialect Hindustani to communicate with our neighbors, and some of us learned Bengali. We also spoke English, that was my first language. As the community dispersed in the years after Indian independence, members of my extended family, too, left for England, Australia, Canada, and the United States and Israel. In Calcutta, we had two main synagogues, Beit El and Magen David, each with soaring ceilings, arched columns, and stained glass windows. Magen David is a red brick building with its signature steeple 140 feet high. Inside, it is exquisitely crafted in the Italian Renaissance style. All our synagogues, uh, except for uh, one or two in Bombay today, were Orthodox synagogues. So the men sat downstairs and the women sat upstairs. Here the synagogue is um, decorated with different curtains, parachot for Simchat Torah. Uh, the teba, as we call the bima, is in the middle, as is Sephardic custom, surrounded by uh, benches on all sides. The ark is actually an ark room, which at one time held as many as 75 Sifrei Torah in wooden cases overlaid with silver. On Simchat Torah, all the Sifrei Torah were taken out of the heichal and displayed around the perimeter of the sanctuary. Sadly, today there are no minyanim in Calcutta to support the synagogues, and they are now government heritage sites. So we just finished celebrating Purim, and Pesach is around the corner. So let me tell you that we have a Haggadah that contains an Arabic translation of the Hebrew that is chanted after each paragraph, romaine lettuce on the Seder plate, 
instead of horseradish for maror, a date liquid called chalek for haroset, celery leaves instead of parsley, lemon juice instead of salt water, bread instead of matzah, no, no, no. <laughs> now you all want to become Indian Jews now, but no, no, we, we have matzah, but it's a little different matzah than, than in the United States. We even have a different order and, of course, a different melody to the four questions. The pressure is off the youngest because we all chant it together. So here's how it sounds. I will sing two verses for you in Hebrew and two verses in my Americanized Judeo-Arabic. And when I get to the Judeo-Arabic, you, you guys raise your hands so I know that you're listening, okay? Manish tana halayla hazeh mikol halaylot shebechol halaylot Eina nachnu metabeli nafilu paam achat vealayla hazeh shetei feamim Shebechol halaylot anachnu achlin chametz ha-matza vealayla hazeh kulo matza Ad fikilyali nachna aklin chedar yamerar vahadele la kulo merar. Ad fikilyali nachna aklin ushar bin ben kadin u ben mintikin vahadele la kirit namintikin. The end. <laughs>